You want a war? You're gonna get one. Now get the guns, the drugs, the my generation will take the fall. The saints will come to me. Hey yo Chico, welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome to the 28th of June 1999. We've got Raw in Charlotte, North Carolina tonight while Nitro's taking place in Chicago, Illinois. It's the night after King of the Ring, The Undertaker is still WWF Champion while Vince and Shane now have complete control over the WWF. But forget about all that nonsense, none of that's important ladies and gents, because at the very beginning of Nitro we learn about a main event match that has the potential to change the world as we know it. Ric Flair arrives to the United Center along with his son David and Bruce MacArthur, the man who built the United Center in Chicago, and recognizes that tonight David's gonna get a world title shot and he's going up against big sexy Kevin Nash. Bruce says this statue of Michael Jordan's gonna pale in comparison to the statue David Flair's gonna get when he leaves Chicago as world heavyweight champion, and Daddy Rick says when all's said and done, everyone's gonna be singing I wanna be like David. I want to be like Dave. Woo! David's even got his hair dyed for this special occasion. The color matches his shirt. And that should tell us all we need to know, folks. New heavyweight champion incoming. Kevin Nash has no chance. Shout out to this week's jam up guys, husband and wife Matt and Cara. This photo was also supposed to include Matt's brother Michael, the man who got Matt into reliving the war, but Michael decided to stay at home because he's a great age jabroni. You ought to be ashamed of yourself Michael. <laughs> Seriously though, thank you for spreading the word and thanks for the photo Matt and Cara. Right, get yourselves comfortable, this should be a good one. Reliving the war episode 190. Steve Regal's returned to WCW and he's in our opening tag team match, Regal and Finley vs Saturn and Benoit. Dave Taylor's also realigned himself with Regal and as our match gets underway, Tony Schiavone confirms that the music video for Rap is Crap is going to debut tonight on Nitro. We all know Steve Blackman got called back to the arena last night at King of the Ring even though he planned on showing up on Nitro tonight to stop the West Texas Rednecks from doing any more damage, but the music video will air on TNT tonight and this is going to piss Blackman off even more. Finley schools Benoit and he gives the crippler a wrestling lesson before Chris uses that intensity of his to get the upper hand. When we come back from a commercial break, it's Finley taking care of Saturn and Regal then comes in to kick Perry around for a bit. Regal then, <laughs> Regal then does this and man it's good to have Regal back. We didn't get to see any of these mannerisms while he was in WWF but it looks like he's back on form in WCW, though he does tag out again after taking an overhead belly to belly suplex. Finley and Saturn trade sleeper holds before Regal and Benoit come in. Chris has a lot of fire here and he manages to hit Steve with a diving headbutt before applying the crossface to Finley. The move gets broken up and Steve tries his Regal stretch but this too gets broken up quite easily. And even though Dave Taylor tries to interfere, the babyfaces win after Saturn hits Regal with a death volley driver. Benoit and Saturn are now going to go on to bash at the beach where they'll get a shot at the WCW Tag Team Championships. Someone else who's going to bash at the beach is Van Hammer. Mr. Hammer interrupted Flair, Piper and company to request a title shot saying as he's been on a roll lately and I mean yeah, you can't really argue that. Flair and Piper decide that Van Hammer should face Rick Steiner for the TV title at the pay per view and again, you can't really argue that. I mean he shouldn't get near the US title or god forbid the world title just yet. Flair Piper AA Asia and a returning Lil Nate Charles Robinson head down to the ring for an interview and Piper's first order of business is to address Hard Stern. Apparently Stern challenged Piper to a fight and while accepting this challenge, Piper decides to make fun of Stern's little pecker. 
Piper then says he and Flair are going to give the youth of WCW another opportunity tonight. The title match between Big Bad Dave and Big Sexy is going to be a lumberjack match just to ensure no shenanigans goes on, but I do really think that's going to have the opposite effect to be fair. Rick says that he himself can't be world champion again due to his position as president, which makes you fucking wonder why he booked himself in title matches against Hogan earlier in the year, but nonetheless, Rick also wants to call a truce with Randy Savage and he wants to form an alliance with his old arch nemesis. Team Madness walk down to the ring and Flair says he wants Savage and his buddies to become lumberjacks for tonight's title match. To sweeten the deal, Flair says he'll lift the ban on Randy's elbow drop and I really thought this was already lifted after Great American Bash, but yeah. Yeah. Charles Robinson isn't too happy about this proposition and Randy says he doesn't really care who holds the world belt as long as it's not Kevin Nash. So Macho and Sid join forces with Ric Flair and Roddy Piper. Raw begins with, you guessed it, a corporate ministry promo, on Nitro, it's Lodi vs Eddie Guerrero. Balloons fall from the ceiling as the corporate ministry make their way down to the ring. Mr McMahon says tonight's a celebration and the corporation are celebrating the total dejection of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Shane takes the microphone and he fires Steve Austin as WWF CEO and Vince says Austin's going right back to the very bottom. Stone Cold has to restart his WWF career and he'll do it at the lowest level possible. Stone Cold will compete tonight, Vince promises to put Austin in a preliminary matchup and Austin's also going to have to tear the ring down later on and he'll help transport it to the next city. Vince then celebrates The Undertaker's dominance over The Rock, a king of the ring. He celebrates unity within the corporate ministry, and to show there's no drama within the faction, McMahon invites The Undertaker to defend his WWF title against Triple H at the upcoming fully loaded pay-per-view. The big boss man then shows up, coming down to the ring with his old Hard Times entrance song, and when asked if he wants to go face to face with Vince and Shane, boss man says he loves these guys and they all have a big hug. By the way, it's not made clear here, but it was the boss man who raised the briefcase last night at King of the Ring. Remember, no corporation members were allowed to interfere, and last night boss man was technically not part of the corporation. Steve Austin arrives, he tells everyone he got screwed last night, but Stone Cold thought something like this may happen and so he took out a little insurance policy. Before the King of the Ring match, Austin wrote himself a new contract, he also gave himself a big pay rise. He removed the clause he had in his old contract where he wasn't allowed to put his hands on Vince unless physically provoked. And finally, Austin reminds everyone that when he became CEO, he promised that he'd be WWF Champion once again. So before King of the Ring, Austin booked himself in a WWF title match for Raw tonight in Charlotte. Austin vs Undertaker is going to happen in our main event and if anyone interferes then the belt goes straight to Stone Cold. Austin has done it again, he stayed one step ahead of Vince McMahon. Now let's see if he can win the WWF title tonight on Raw. On Nitro, Lodi once again gave Lenny Lane a massage before his match and Lenny was worried what WCW would think of these two. Lodi tells Lenny to relax, it's not like they're the only ones in the company, and Lenny says he knows WCW is very open minded but he's still worried what people may think. It's all very ambiguous guys so let's just see how it plays out. Lodi ended up getting completely destroyed by Eddie Guerrero though. The referee took a bump in the first few seconds of the match and Lenny tried to interfere. Instead of helping his buddy out, Lenny ends up kicking Lodi in the face and Eddie takes both guys out with a drop kick followed by an arm drag. Lodi then takes a brain buster before Guerrero goes up for the frog splash and that's when Lenny runs in to try and protect his new best friend. Eddie's like, eh, I don't care and both guys end up taking the frog splash. Eddie wins via pinfall and he thinks there might be something to this relationship between Lenny Lane and Lodi. Roddy Piper and Ric Flair have a discussion backstage on Nitro, while on Raw we've got Ken Shamrock vs Steve Blackman. 
Shamrock says he's gonna keep coming after Vince McMahon, but Kenny Boy should really worry about Steve Blackman because our main man's carrying a bag filled with deadly weapons. This was billed as a weapons match, but Ken said the only weapons he needs are his two fists, and I can't wait to see how that works out. Blackman's furious about what's happening tonight on Nitro, and as expected, Ken Shamrock gets completely annihilated. Shamrock soon realized that his fists alone weren't enough to defeat a literal god among men, so he tries to use a candlestick, and all it takes is one kick to the midsection, and Ken goes down. Blackman then produces the nunchucks, and it's game over. There's no mercy for this former student of the Mavug Dojo, as nothing but pure hate flows through the body of Steve Blackman. Steve pretends Shamrock's a member of the West Texas Rednecks as he beats Ken with his Eskrima stick. Complete and utter domination right here. And Ken takes a shot with the Kendo stick before Blackman packs his bags that once again try to make it to Chicago, Illinois. The Rap is Crap music video cannot play tonight on TNT, and Steve's going to use his powers of teleportation to get the Nitro. Meanwhile, Ric Flair just watched what happened on Raw and he orders extra security for the front and back doors. He also reminds Piper that Double A, Sid, Savage, Medusa, Asia, Roddy and Flair himself are going to be lumberjacks tonight, but Roddy Piper thinks that a few more men are needed. He thinks a big man like Bam Bam Bigelow could make for a great lumberjack, DDP would also fit the bill quite nicely, and young Chris Canyon so dumb that he'd probably help out too. Flair agrees, and so the Jersey Triad will also be at ringside for tonight's main event. Flair then leads another I want to be like Dave chant as Nitro takes a commercial break. Billy Gunn cuts a promo on Raw next, on Nitro, Hardcore Hack vs Bam Bam Bigelow. Billy says he became a tag team champion last week because the Acolytes didn't have the balls to defend their own belts, and last night he became the 1999 King of the Ring. Billy spent his career carrying guys on his back such as Bart Gunn, Road Dogg and Axe Pac, but now it's all about badass and it's Billy's time to shine, apparently. In regards to Bradshaw wanting his property back, Billy says there's an open invitation tonight for anyone to step into his yard, and that's when Triple H's music begins playing. Hunter and China march down to the ring, and Hunter confirms he doesn't want to fight Billy, instead he has a business proposition for him. Hunter wants to know if Billy got his royalty check recently because both Hunter and China's checks have been a little bit lower than usual. Hunter looked into this, and it turns out X Pac and Road Dog are claiming all privileges to the DX name. All merch money's going to X Pac and Road Dog, and that means these two Jagovs are stealing from Billy, Triple H, and China. Seeing as Triple H is busy right now and he's focused on winning the WWF title, Hunter's prepared to loan China out so Billy and the Ninth Wonder of the World can claim what's rightfully theirs, and Billy accepts this agreement. Triple H then tells the production guys to hit their music, the DX theme song plays, and it's here when The Rock runs down to attack Triple H. Remember, Hunter cost Rock the WWF title last night at King of the Ring. Security break it up and both men seem eager to get at each other, but don't worry, we'll see a Rock vs Triple H match a little later on. Over on Nitro, Hack wanted a match against Ric Flair, but instead he got Bam Bam Bigelow, meaning we, the fans, get to see a match we've already watched four or five times at this point. Strangely, this one wasn't contested as a hardcore match though, so at least it had something different going on. But there was nothing noteworthy about the match, and the majority of the bout was controlled by Bam Bam Bigelow. It ended with DDP and Canyon running down to interfere, Hack tried to fight off both men but he ended up taking a diamond cutter, and Bigelow gets a pinfall win. Nothing special, let's move on. Chaz, the former beaver cleavage and headbanger mosh, reveals that Mrs. Cleavage is actually his girlfriend. Her name is Mariana, and she wanted Chaz to do his own thing and become his own star in WWF. So there's no more beaver cleavage, no more headbangers. Chaz is just a kid from New Jersey, and he's here to have fun. Raw then cuts to some GTV footage, and Luke, it's Tess giving Stephanie a little kiss before taking her for a ride in his car. The couple just left a hotel, so Stephanie McMahon must be one dirty, dirty dog. Next on Raw, we have Meat vs Chaz plus Hardcore Holly vs Kane. On Nitro, World Heavyweight Champion Kevin Nash cuts a promo. So Chaz comes out to wrestle this match as a normal dude with admittedly very little charisma, but it's still better than the beaver cleavage thing for sure. The match was very short here, Terry Runnels got on the apron and so Mariana got up there too. Terry performed a dramatic jump after taking a little shove from Chaz's girlfriend, and Chaz won the match with a burning hammer, or a lukewarm hammer, room temperature hammer. 
Terry Taylor then tries to get a word with Horn Dog Test, but the big man gets jumped by a bunch of dudes who should not be messed with. Have you ever had sex? I haven't felt great. It felt so good when I did it with my penis. A girl let me do it. It literally just happened. Having sex can make a nice man up the meanest. Oh, hey. Shane and the Mean Street Posse attack Test. This reminds me of Ken Shamrock defending the honor of Ryan Shamrock, only way more brutal. The Mean Street Posse is way more dangerous than Ken Shamrock, and I'm surprised Test made it out of there alive. Next up, Hardcore Holly came to the ring, and he still thinks he's the giant killer of WWF. The Big Shot got a car dropped on his head, and he's still standing. But Holly does not want to fight the Big Show tonight. Oh no, he wants to fight Kane. Holly forgets what he's talking about mid promo, and you can see the moment where his his brain completely switches off, but anyway, Kane got involved in Holly's business last night, so Bob wants to get some revenge. Kane gets in the ring and he wrecks his opponent. He tries to end it early with a diving clothesline, but he ends up getting his wee red machine smashed on the top rope. And after about a minute of action, the Big Show decides to walk down to the ring. Holly distracts the referee, the Big Show choke slams Kane, and this allows Holly to win via pinfall. Kane, the big sore loser that he is, gives Holly four consecutive choke slams. So the big man doesn't really lose any of his momentum by taking this loss. As a matter of fact, the crowd went nuts for Kane right here. But let it be known that Hardcore Holly has a televised pinfall win over the Big Red Machine. On Nitro, Kev says he stated from day one that he's an outsider in World Championship Wrestling and he knows Roddy Piper and Ric Flair want Nash to drop the world belt tonight. Kev's only friend, Scott Hall, is sitting in Orlando right now, so Big Sexy's all alone as he faces Ric Flair's kid in a lumberjack match. Nash is still going to defend the world belt, however, he wants a stipulation added. If David wins, then that's fine, he can have the world belt. But if Kev wins, Big Sexy wants Tori Wilson for 72 hours. It'll only take Big Kev 72 hours to completely ruin Tori, and if David's so confident that he can beat Nash tonight, then Flair Jr. should agree to this stipulation. With this kind of incentive, Kevin knows he's gonna win tonight, so let's wait and we'll see what happens at the end of the show. I like country music, I love country girls. I like Willie Nelson, and don't forget about Merle. There's only one thing that I hate, cause it's a bunch of crap. I, I, I hate rap. We've got another Rock vs Triple H match taking place next on Raw. On Nitro, the West Texas Rednecks take on the NWB team. High times have changed, they. The New World Order, once a cutting edge team and a group responsible for changing the face of pro wrestling forever, and now we've got Kurt Hennig's West Texas Rednecks in a much more prominent position. After Barry Windham and Brian Adams do a bit of work, Kurt Hennig gets destroyed by Stevie Ray. Kendall Windham, the newest member of Kurt's group, doesn't have much luck against Stevie either, and Luke, Vincent's pulling off some sweet arm drags. It's remarkable how Vincent started coming into his own a little in Reliving the War after passing away recently, not even coming into his own, just actually doing stuff in the ring. He's not so successful against Bobby D though, so Big Horse comes in and Kurt helps his buddy out by slapping the back of young Hogan's head. The match breaks down and Vincent thinks his partners are sucking ass right about now, so he pulls off a swinging neckbreaker just before the ring clears out. As is tradition though, Vincent takes the pinfall loss for his team following a double bulldog from Bobby D and Kendall Windham, and the West Texas Rednecks pick up a win on WCW Nitro. The gang then warns Steve Blackman to stay away from the arena tonight. That music video will get played later on, and there's nothing the Lethal Weapon can do about it. Over on Raw, Rock says he's not going to cry about what happened last night. He says Triple H doesn't have enough hair on his Rudy Poo candy ass to walk down to the ring and get served a big old Rock Burger. But to sweeten the deal a little, Rock says he'll serve that Rock Burger with a nice tall glass of freshly squeezed monkey piss. The, cr <laughs> the crowd are so into this guy right now, and Steve Austin has some real competition when it comes to the most popular superstar in WWF. Triple H dashes down to the ring to get his monkey piss, but he instead takes a few right hands from Rocky, so the Great One totally lied during his promo. I'm disappointed. Someone holds up a sign saying Shane blows donkeys as The Rock continues his assault, but Triple H delivers the Harley Race knee, and this gets followed up with a few punches in the corner. Hunter's getting pretty vicious here. 
Rock fights back with the DDT before he brings Triple H to the corner for a taste of his own medicine, but the match then abruptly ends when Billy Gunn interferes and Rock gets smacked with one of Steve Blackman's sticks. It's a DQ finish as the 1999 King of the Ring gets himself involved in this Triple H vs Rock rivalry. This new alliance between Billy, Hunter and China could be interesting. Not sure if it's really the best thing for a King of the Ring winner to get involved with though, but at least Gunn's now mixing it up with folks that are currently higher on the cards. A few folks who are not higher on the cards are Val Venus, Draws and Prince Albert. Venus gets attacked by these two backstage, so I guess Albert's still angry about that ale tattoo he got last week. Disco fever. Yeah, yeah. Disco Inferno and Ernest Miller square off in a dance competition next on Nitro. On Raw, it's The Godfather vs Edge. So we've got the Nitro girls judging this dance competition and one of these guys are going to get served tonight. The cat's up first and he dances just like James Brown. James Brown having a heart attack. No way, James Brown's dead, isn't he? Scrap that. Did James die of a heart attack though? Um, let's see here. Mystery surrounding James Brown's death. Many people believe it. Alright, enough of that. The Disco Inferno's up next and he gets a way bigger pop than Ernest Miller. His dance moves are basic but super effective it seems, so the cat attacks Disco and we end up having a normal one on one match. The two continue dancing in between offense, Disco performs his second rope elbow drop while the cat performs a hook kick, Ernest then kicks a few flies that were hovering around the ring and he knocked them all out, and Disco then finds himself on the outside where Sonny Ono gets the boots in. Ono made a career out of doing this didn't he? Back in the ring Disco takes a kick to the chest, he gets a chance to fight back though and Miller misses a stinger splash, the cat takes a back elbow, Disco performs the chart buster and he… I, I, I don't know what this is, sorry. Sonny Ono gets in the ring but he ends up kicking Miller, the match continues on with Disco getting vicious in the corner, and when Nick Patrick pulls the inferno away the cat's able to put it on his ruby slipper, I'm not even going to complain about it anymore. Ernest says there's no place like home, Disco gets kicked, Miller goes for the cover but it gets broken up by Ono when big butthead Jerry Flynn makes an appearance. The match gets thrown out when Jerry Lynn with an F kicks Miller in the face and Jerry then challenges Miller to a kickboxing match next week in the Georgia Dome. I can hardly contain my excitement, I wish it was next week already. Jerry then says a naughty word when heading back up the ramp and you can see a moment of panic in his face when he realises what he just said. You heard what the cat said about take care Jerry Flynn, Ernest. start it! On Raw, Edge and the Godfather trade blows while Jerry Lawler wishes he was trading blows with the Godfather's creatures. It doesn't take long for the Godfather to go in control and Edge found himself in position for the whole train. Godfather hits his signature move but then Darren Drozdov shows up along with Prince Albert. Albert performs a military press sit down slam while the referee remains distracted for a very long time and Edge wins the match after hitting the spear. Draws and Albert then tie Godfather up in the ropes and they try to pierce the tongue of one of Godfather's hoes. Edge ends up helping this young mother of six and he joins forces with Godfather to take these goons out. And check it out, Edge gets a freebie for all his hard work. Gangrel wanted a piece of that action, the funky vampire seen in the audience shaking his head at this debauchery, so it seems we're still on track for a brood breakup very soon. Backstage, Billy Gunn tells someone not to interfere in his upcoming match unless it's totally necessary. We don't know if this is Triple H or China, but the smart money says it's China. We've got Billy Gunn vs Bradshaw next on Raw. On Nitro, the Jersey Triad defend their tag team titles against Buff Bagwell and Dean Malenko. Remember, all three members of the triad can wrestle in this match, but one member has to stay on the outside at all times. Arn Anderson's joined the commentary team for this one and Ric Flair says Double A's gonna referee our WCW title match later tonight. We start off with Malenko schooling DDP and Paige decides to tag in Canyon. Bagwell also tags in and all Buff Daddy wants to do is pose, so Canyon knocks Buff down and he copies Bagwell's famous taunt, quite poorly. 
Kenyon tags out and he goes to the floor afterwards, allowing DDP to legally tag in Bam Bam Bigelow for a moment. Malenko's getting singled out here and it looks like we're building towards a Buff Bagwell hot tag. So we get offense from all three triad members, including a second rope leg drop from Kenyon and a nice delayed tilt towards sidewalk slam from DDP. Dallas taunts the audience while Kenyon and Bam Bam do a number on Malenko just before commercial break and when we come back DDP hits Malenko with a diving clothesline but Stenko Malenko counters another sidewalk slam attempt. Buff gets the hot tag, the crowd pops, even the commentators get excited for Bagwell's offense here as the company continues push. Bigelow prevents a blockbuster attempt and it's now time for Buff to take some punishment. Bam Bam's first to get a piece of Buff followed by Chris Canyon and DDP then comes in to pull off his little elbow drop. We really need a name for this guys so let me know in the comments. DDP performs a superplex on Buff but Canyon misses a diving splash. Chris then tries his best to keep Buff away from his corner but Dean gets tagged in and after Dean beats up all three triad members he covers Canyon but Paige causes a referee bump when breaking up the pin. Buff pulls off the blockbuster on Canyon, Dean applies the Texas Cloverleaf, but Bam Bam Bigelow breaks it up and our match ends with the Asbury Park Cutter. The challengers just couldn't overcome the numbers advantage and the Jersey Triad leave Nitro still our tag team champions. Jersey Triad matches are quickly becoming highlights on Nitro and again, I'll take anything I can get at this point. A decent tag team match right here from WCW. On Raw, Farouk swings his tag team belt at Billy Gunn and he misses by a mile. Billy still takes the bump so we're off to a great start. In the ring, Billy hits his running forearm but Bradshaw counters a stinger splash with a fallaway slam. Billy gets up and he pulls off a tornado DDT. He then hits a dropkick as JR wonders exactly what happens to the tag team championships if Billy wins this match. And JR had every right to worry because Farouk accidentally smacks Bradshaw and it looks like this one's all over. X-Pac then appears, he pulls Billy down to the mat, Gun then walks straight into a clothesline from hell and Bradshaw reclaims his property by pinning BA Billy Gun. It's insane that the man who won the King of the Ring just 24 hours earlier is getting pinned on Raw but here we are. China then attacks X-Pac from behind and Road Dog has to run down to save his buddy. China takes the dancey punch before she and BA decide to leave the ring and the DX music plays just before Raw takes a commercial break. I don't know guys, the more I think about this, the more I think maybe X-Pac and Road Dog should stop stealing DX money and just pay up. Tony Schiavone makes an important announcement on Nitro next. Steve Blackman teleported to the arena parking lot and he went looking for Kurt Hennig. Someone in a black Hummer ran over Blackman though and he was quickly teleported back to Raw. Steve could not stop rap his crap from airing on TV and Tony has the pleasure of introducing the video to folks at home. Now, I can't play this from start to end of course, but look it up on YouTube. The song's all about how Kurt loves country music, country girls, Willie Nelson, NASCAR racing, but there's one thing Kurt hates and that is rap music. You gotta appreciate the pettiness here. This all started because Kurt was tired of seeing rap music on Nitro and here he is, releasing songs and recording music videos. It's so ridiculous that it's actually genius. The song did get a decent amount of play on country radio stations. It went over really well with country fans apparently. So WCW inadvertently got themselves a hit country music single while paying Master P a lot of money to promote hip hop on Nitro. It's just another one of those backwards WCW. CW things that you can't help but laugh at. Someone who's not laughing though is Steve Blackman. Word has it that Ken Shamrock was blasting rap as crap from his car when Steve teleported back to Raw and Ken also burned a few CDs for the boys so they could listen to the song in their cars. More on this next week. Next, <laughs> next we have Scott Putsky vs Sid Vicious on Nitro. Okay. On Raw we've got an Ivory promo plus X-Pac vs Double J Jeff Jarrett. Big Sid looks angry as he walks down to the ring and gotta say he takes ages when making his entrance. Polish power is not going to help Mr. Putski here as the women of Team Madness surround the ring because Sid really needs the help right here doesn't he? The women begin touching Scott and the crowd boos at the lack of action here. This has gone on for way too long and when Sid finally attacks his opponent the crowd have already checked out. This probably all sounded better when it was discussed backstage before the match. The crowd then begin a Goldberg chant as Putski gets choked out at the ropes. Big Sid then kicks Scott over and over again as Macho talks smack to the commentator. Scott then takes two kicks to the midsection before going up for a choke slam, and Sid ends it with his signature powerbomb. I love Sid, but this was absolute dog shit. 
Macho grabs the mic and he says Nash is losing the championship tonight. He decides to drop the elbow on Scott just because he can, and Sid tells Big Sexy to take note of what just happened to Mr. Putski tonight. On Raw, Ivory says the days of Barbie doll women champions in WWF are now over. Yeah, that statement was totally wrong. And Ivory says there's no competition in the back, so she wants to be like Apollo Creed and give some loser in the audience an opportunity to win the women's belt. A young lady then steps into the ring, and if you recognize who this is, then well done, you've been paying attention to this series. This is Malaya Hosaka, who you may remember as a competitor in WCW Nitro. She competed on Nitro a few times, and she was one of the better female wrestlers the WCW brought over during their brief experiment with women's wrestling on the program. She does manage to take Ivory down here, but unfortunately she takes a powerbomb from the cold bass, and we'd never see her again on WWF television. She was kept under contract though. She was about to return when Aguila was repackaged as S.A. Rios, but the WWF went with a lady named Lita instead, and well, the rest is history. Michael Cole gets a word with Mr. McMahon, and Vince says he's not worried about this title match tonight. At King of the Ring, Vince and Shane took the heart of Stone Cold, so Austin's already at a disadvantage heading into tonight's title match. Next up, X-Pac took on Jeff Jarrett for the IC title, and it didn't take long for this one to go to the outside. X-Pac took a bump at the ring steps, and back in the ring he took a shot to the midsection followed by a Russian leg sweep. Remember, Kid got his neck messed up pretty bad last night, and taking bumps like this right here couldn't help matters. Jarrett locks in a sleeper hold, Pac replies with a sleeper of his own, Jarrett applies another sleeper, and Pac hits a low blow. Jeff decides to completely no-sell this more or less as he hits the ropes only to get caught with a spinning back kick. Pac counters a Hurricane Rana attempt with a sit down power bomb. He manages the road through after a double J crossbody. Jeff ends up in position for the Bronco Buster, and the match ends after Kid performs his signature move. Billy Gunn shows up once again, and this time he's holding Double J's guitar. He swings at Pac, but Kid dodges it, and it's Jarrett who ends up taking a guitar shot after Kid gets hold of the weapon. Unfortunately, our referee's completely distracted, and this allows Billy to hit a Famouser. Double J wins via pinfall, and it all ends with a big brawl between Billy Gunn, X Pog, China, and Road Dog. I mentioned how WWF needed to build up Billy Gunn after his King of the Ring victory, but I'm still not sure about this. This was Billy's fourth appearance tonight, and it feels like he's being a bit overexposed right now. But let's hold judgment for a few weeks. Maybe it'll get better. Nitro ends this week with David Flair vs Kevin Nash, should be a doozy. On Raw, it's The Undertaker vs Stone Cold Steve Austin. Two championship main events this week and we're going to start with Flair vs Nash. Look at David Flair wearing one of his dad's robes. He gets in the ring and he's trying to just be like Slick Rick. The backup squad arrives, Team Madness and the Jersey Triad, but Big Kev doesn't look concerned at all as he steps into the ring. David Flair shits his trunks and he decides to step to the outside. The Lumberjacks then jump Nash and the crowd boos. I don't think anyone cares about seeing a David Flair match, they're just fed up of the same old nonsense. Nash gets completely wrecked and Savage wraps a chain around his hand before delivering a big punch. Arn pretends he had something in his eye as Sid and Macho taunt the world champion. And then Sid and Ric Flair drag Nash to the middle of the ring so David can apply the figure 4. The move gets locked in, Arn begins to count, Nash kicks out at 2, and the world champion starts beating the hell out of David Flair. It's almost like Nash didn't get knocked out just 2 seconds ago. Big Kev delivers the corner knee strikes, he delivers the back elbow, David takes a sidewalk slam and Nash then hits a big boot. The Lumberjacks attack Nash once again and this time Kev fights everyone off. David Flair gets his hands on a taser and Nash takes it off him, and after zapping everybody, Nash decides to grab Gorgeous George before heading back up the ramp. Tori Wilson then joins Kevin, she seems happy with how all this turned out and it looks like Tori's turned her back on big bad David Flair. As the heels lick their wounds in the ring, we see Nash bringing his girls back to his limousine, but then we see the Black Hummer. Sting is sitting inside the vehicle and he's looking right at Kevin Nash. Nitro then goes off the air as Kev escapes in his limo before Randy Savage gets a hold of him. The plot thickens, ladies and gents. Was it really Sting who drove the Hummer? Was it also Sting who ran over Steve Blackman? Tune in next week and we probably won't find out. 
On Raw, our match starts right away with both men exchanging right hands. The two get out of the corner and Austin performs the Luthez press, and after dropping an elbow, Stone Cold brings it back to the corner once again. Taker counters an Irish whip, Austin tries a stunner, but The Undertaker counters before heading to the outside. After taking a ring step bump, The Undertaker gets back inside the ropes. Stone Cold goes down after a big boot and Paul Bear smacks him with his stinky shoe. Austin gets dumped back to the outside, and this time it's Stone Cold taking a bump at the ring step. Austin fights back and he gets Taker in position for a pile driver, but Studley Paul interferes once again, and this time Austin's able to fend Paul off. Though the champ hits a clothesline and the Phenom takes advantage as our match gets back in the ring. Stone Cold gets thrown from one corner to another, the dead man chokes the rattlesnake out. The referee tries to intervene and this gives Austin the opportunity to try a body slam. Unfortunately, Austin's not successful here and the challenger pays for his crimes with a devastating main event chin lock. Stone Cold fights out but he ends up taking a body slam, followed by old school. So Taker goes straight back to the chin and this time Stone Cold gets out with a jawbreaker. Austin then tries to do some damage at the ring post but Undertaker counters it. We then go back to the outside for a brief moment and when we get back inside the ring, both men get wiped out after a double clothesline. The crowd are on their feet as the men get up for one last exchange. Austin stumps a mud hole in the champion, he then counters a tombstone and there it is, Stone Cold Stunner. Paul Bear pulls the referee out before the count gets made though and Austin feels it's only necessary to punch Paul in the mouth. Back in the ring, Undertaker clotheslines Austin but all Austin has to do is hit one more stunner. And just like that, we've got ourselves a new champion on Raw's War. Stone Cold wins the WWF belt for the fourth time. The crowd goes crazy as Stone Cold holds the belt up but the celebration doesn't last long. The Undertaker grabs the belt and he smacks Stone Cold right in the head. Stone Cold's been busted wide open and even though he tries to fight back, The Undertaker's furious at losing the championship. Raw goes off the air with The Undertaker continuing his assault, so we know that this rivalry, this feud that's been on and off for a year now, is far from reaching its conclusion. Raw wins reliving the war this week. The championship match at the end was good, and it's actually one of the better Austin vs Undertaker matches we have seen so far. While I'm not sure about Billy Gunn's booking on this night, it's still interesting seeing where the company are going with him, and the heel Steve Blackman is something I can definitely get behind. Nitro had the better matches again, the Jersey Triad are a reason to tune into TNT, but Nitro's semi-main and main event matches left that usual bitter WCW taste in my mouth, and it was once again the headliners that let Nitro down this week. Raw's on 98 points, Nitro's on 73, and we've got 19 ties. In the television ratings, both shows improved. Raw got a 6.8 and Nitro got a 3.6. Next week on Raw, Vince McMahon lays out some stipulations for the fully loaded main event. We've got Joey Abs taking on Test in a one-on-one -on -one match, and Triple H faces The Rock inside a steel cage. Nitro comes from the Georgia Dome next week and we've got the Jerry Flynn vs Ernest Miller kickboxing match, should be a nice little disaster. Kurt Hennig and the West Texas Rednecks play rap his crop live for the fine folks of Atlanta, and Bret Hart returns to share a few words about his brother Rowan. I'll see you all next week, thank you so much for watching, and please take care.